Welcome everybody, this is the WoW Collector. Um, decided to do something completely different from the channel, but I think it's needed at a time like this. A lot of people are coming to the game, and it's a very massive experience. It's really easy to be overwhelmed, even if you're returning after a hiatus of some sort. World of Warcraft just continues to expand and just exponentially increase in the amount of content, amount of things to do. So what I figured I'd do today is actually walk you through how to play World of Warcraft. And what that means is starting up the game from scratch, just experiencing the world and kind of advancing. Uh, I have a bunch of accounts, obviously. I'm going to use a new account today, uh, walk you through exactly what you get when you purchase the game. So the way it works now is if you pay for a monthly subscription, you get up to level 110 in content. Right now, the most recent expansion is Battle for Azeroth, which is from 110 to 120. Those are levels your character would have. Um, it takes a while to get there, obviously, so let's walk through kind of what happens. And then from there, we'll talk about Shadowlands, which is coming out in the future. So right now, we're going to start on a starter edition. So all that means is you've bought a monthly subscription. This entitles you to level up to 110 for free. By paying the $15 a month or if you get a deal um, start this up here so some things are happening I've never touched this account before so it's brand new so this is what you would see um, this is the character creation screen that's where the game is going to start with a new count account they're gonna put you on a new server so we're just gonna jump right into sh to what you experience um, starting in the top left hand corner we have gender, so male or female. That just This is going to be your character as you play the game. Now you can make different characters with different classes, and just different classes are just different ways to attack. That's basically the, the gist. Um, Left-hand side, we have the alliance faction. The right-hand side is red. We have the horde faction, and they're individual races within that faction. The Pandaren are down here. You actually start their starting zone up to level 10, and then you get to pick your faction from there. Um, the server you select is, that's going to be the world you're, you're on, quote unquote, I guess, for the better way to explain it. Um, on that server, there'll be a number of characters, and that affects a lot of things. But for right now, since it's just a starter account, we're just going to walk through just the basics of World of Warcraft. Um, there's a button down here called Allied Races. Now, these are extra races that they started in Legion, which was the last expansion and then have kind of continued into Battle for Azeroth. So the way the expansions work are, we have Vanilla World of Warcraft, which is level one through 60. Burning Crusade came out, and that's level 60 through 70. So there's a whole new world, whole new content, dungeons, quests, everything. Uh, then level 70 to 80 was the Wrath of the Lich King. 80 to 85 was Cataclysm. 85 to 90 with Mist of Pandaria, 90 to 100 with Warlords of Draenor, 100 to 110 is Legion, and then 110 to 120 is Battle for Azeroth. So what we mean by when we say those things is those are the level numbers. So when you got to level 60, you got to move over to Burning Crusade and all the content that came with that. Um, in Shadowlands, so that's the next expansion that's coming out, they're going to squish everything down. So all you need to know is, is that after a certain amount of levels, you're going to get to go to explore different content. And with each new piece of content, other things have been added to the game. game came out in 2004, 16 years, so there's a lot that's there. It can feel overwhelming, but let's, let's not make it overwhelming. Let's make it very simple for you. So let's go back to core races. We're just going to pick a dwarf. We're going to make this very simple. So what do dwarves do? Well, if you click this More Info button right here, it tells you some characteristics of the dwarves. There's a little paragraph here you can read. Talks just a brief synopsis of what a dwarf does, what they've experienced. And right here in yellow, these are special traits that that, that race has. So dwarves can take on stone form. They get increased effect from critical strikes. They're resistant to frost damage. And they find additional archaeology fragments and survey faster. So you can go through all these. Night elves have a pretty cool one that if you're dead... Uh, you can travel faster, and then you have this ability called Shadow Meld, where you can actually go into the shadows if you, you know, you're surrounded by too many enemies. But let's make this simple. We're just going to take all choice out just for right now because the goal isn't to just find out everything right away. The goal is really to get playing, 
and then you're gonna you're gonna going to experience more by playing. I mean, it's it's, it's hard to sit here and read every single thing for every class and because there's no wrong choices in all honesty i mean if you're trying to push um really hard content you're gonna have a this basic understanding already so it's it's not really that important honestly go through these classes find out which one you like the look of that's that's the the most important thing okay now having said that on the right hand side these are pretty important these are the classes that we can choose now demon hunters and death knights are locked because their starting level is higher than the starter edition account we can only go to level 20 as a starter edition but the starter edition isn't what you're going to want to play the entire time it's just something to kind of get your feet wet see is this really for you so we're gonna go dwarf hunters are pretty awesome because they have pets and they can shoot stuff from far away so you're not so close in the combat but I honestly think I want to start us with a paladin, and the reason why is paladins can do a few things, can do most things that other classes can. So when you look at the world of Warcraft, there's two battle types. One is a melee class, that means you're up front with the enemies. Then you have what's called a ranged cast, which means you're far away from the enemies attacking them as they approach you. So I want to start with a melee class because that way we're not having to we're not so squishy. We're not going to die as fast with a melee class. Um, there's different armor classes and all those things, but I don't want to focus on that right now. I really want to focus on just experiencing the game to start and just jumping in. So we're going to go Paladin just to make it simpler. And I also have a review of all classes, but I think it's important to have some sort of context prior to explaining what the classes are. Because I can sit here and read them all to you, explain, you know, the ins and outs of every class, but there's no relevance for you there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump in the game. So pick a paladin because they look neat and you like the armor. Customize. So you have five categories on this race. Now different races have different amounts of categories. So for dwarves, we can change the skin color. Let's go there. Face. I like that one. Hairstyle. I'm actually okay with that hairstyle. Let's make the color a little blonder though. That was eight, right? Let's go four. Make it look a little younger. Facial hair. I'm okay with that. So, if you want to, you can click this button right here called Randomize, and it would randomize all these values for these categories. It'd make you look different. So, if you're having a hard time finding inspiration, that's what I would try. You can also randomize your name down here. Your name's pretty important because that's how people. Sormon. That's how people are going to in engage with you. Sormon. I like that. You know, I had a name already kind of picked out, but let's go with that. So up here, you're going to see two things. You're going to see new and class trial. So what's interesting is you can buy these tokens that allow you to level a character to 110 right away. That skips a lot of things, especially if you're first starting out. It's a lot because there's so many things you can do. So instead, let's start here. We're going to click finish. So a couple things have happened. First of all, Shows us that we're starter edition. We can upgrade by buying the expansion, which would then unlock a lot of content. You can quest up to level 110, um, but we'll wait on that for right now. Uh, upgrade, I think, in this case, just wants you to buy a subscription because starter editions are free. Here's our character. On the right-hand side, this is where they'll put all your characters. Dwarves start in, the, in a region near Iron Forge, which is the dwarf home. So right now, you just have to remember, we're gonna start in some small town. We're gonna work our way towards Iron Forge. Up here is Realm. So what's important about this is if you're meeting up with a friend, you want to switch this realm and make a character on that realm. You can have up to 50 characters per account. There are 12 classes in World of Warcraft. So this is the first one. They're called Paladins. They're holy warriors. So we use the light to judge and cleanse, judge our enemies and cleanse our allies. Um, so up here, you would switch change realm. There's a number of realms. Um, I'm not gonna go through that part right now. But you'd want to find the realm where your friends are at, or at least people you know, because it's it's important to make that connection. There's also other perks um, based on the size of the realm or server. But we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's just jump in the game. So we're gonna hit Enter World here. Down the left, though, just for your own information. Move my face here. We have shop, which is you can buy things with real money. Add-ons, which allow you to experience parts of the game in different ways, and then the menu. So I am not going to play the intro video. 
Um, I'm going to assume that you start a new character should experience that on your own. So, you can hit the escape button to skip things. So, we're obviously in the middle of some type of battle right here. The important thing you want to see is exclamation points or quests. And that's what you want to look at. But let's kind of dive into a little bit more of what you see on the screen. The top left hand corner is your character. Your health bar is in green and then your resource is in blue. No matter what that is, that's going to be the same on every class. The way you refill that is different per class, but all the same, you lose all your green, you're dead. You lose all your blue, it's kind of hard to do some of your main abilities. Simplest way to say it. Your character's face here, and this is your level. So every time you kill stuff, you get what's called experience. And your experience is going to fill this bar up down here. The more stuff you kill, the more quests you do, the quicker that bar fills up, the more you level up, the more power you get, the more abilities you get. Over here is the chat box. You can say a lot of different things, and there are a few commands you want to know. If you hit the enter key, it's immediately going to go down to the chat window. Now, what say does is it says something out loud to people around you. And it puts the text box right above your head. Hello, world. Now you can whisper different people. You can group up in parties. You can yell things. Oh, so you can't yell in a starter edition. Okay. Wow. So they want you to upgrade a Shadowlands right away. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. So we can't yell. Can't express our emotions out loud for everybody here, but we can say things. So if we get close to people, we can say it to them. I don't know if you can whisper a group up, actually, but it's okay. Let's just kind of walk through this. So. We're going to right click on our first quest just because we're here. Okay. You can read the quest information. Hit accept. Now, map is M. And what that does is this is the world map and it shows you where you need to go. This gray arrow is, of course, you. It shows the direction you're pointing. You're going to want to move into the blue area in order to do whatever quests are requiring of you. You can hit the X to close this. You can hit this arrow to make it larger. And you can hit M to make it go away. Or escape. Escape always backs out of a menu. So if you don't know how you got somewhere, just hit escape and exit out. So they bring us up this handy dandy um, snapshot of a keyboard. So you can do a few things. But let's just work with the keyboard at first. So W goes forward. S goes back. A turns left. D turns right. Okay. Spacebar jumps. Those are your first movements. So really you just want to hold down forward and kind of get used to jumping around things and moving around and dodging things. There's a lot of things you can walk through, some things you can't. Now we can also use the mouse. If you right click, that turns almost like a wheel if you're driving a boat. So if you hold W for forward, you can just use your mouse of turn an angle and it allows you to turn faster if you watch i'm turning with the a button goes a little slow turning with d slower but if i hold the right mouse click and i turn it's a lot faster so you can tell if you're watching people in the world if they're turning with a keyboard to go after an enemy or if they're using a mouse definitely has a difference so if you hold both mouse buttons down you can run and then since you're holding the right click you can move you don't even have to use the keys to move this way. You need to play the way is most comfortable for you, regardless of anything else. All right, so we've gone over moving using the mouse and the keyboard. If you zoom on the mouse wheel, you can go back. If you zoom up, you can move forward. You can play first person if you want. I've never really done that because you want to see what you're standing in. Sometimes enemies will put things on the ground and you want to avoid those. All right, so finally, on the keyboard, you'll see one, two, three, and four. These numbers align with these. They go from one to the equal sign on the top of your keyboard. There's a number of ways you can fight things. So let's close this out where we can see. Okay. So I want to attack this target here. Now, some people like to click. So you left click, 
once and that selects the target doesn't do anything to it if I right click it's going to attack the target see how my guy got in his fighting stance he's ready to club him with this carnival style mallet we have and he's pretty angry it escape he goes back to being somewhat docile right click now he can't attack because his mallet obviously can't reach that it's called a rock jaw invader these are called trogs they're hideous creatures he can't reach him so if I were to move forward now I'm in range to reach him and I'm going to club him like whack-a-mole I just got experience if you saw the purple number come up and I got some loot let me give you some advice on starting out we're going to hit escape to pull up a menu you're only going to do this part for right now interface controls auto loot loot key none what that means is when I right click brought that window up and showed what I got it just automatically put it in my bags let me show you what that looks like if that's not on take it off let's club this guy to death that reach the short dwarven arms can hit him from a ways away so all we're doing now is just auto attacking I'm going to right click now it shows me what's in there so let's say he dropped three items I'd have to click each one so if you turn on interface controls auto loot you don't have to worry about that so it keeps telling me to hit this button down here so these are your abilities and these are class specific so as a paladin I have crusader strike it's one of my first abilities I get so what they're telling me to do is, now you saw how long it took to kill that guy. Let's click this guy. Let's move up to him. Now he's yellow. What that means is he will not attack me unless I attack him first. If he's red, if I get close enough to him, probably around here, he's going to chase me. So. Let's get nice and close. He won't see us here. Let's hit one. Let's watch what happens. Oh, he does a spin with a mallet. Now, See how I can't use it yet? I have to wait. This is what's called a cooldown. The ability is almost recharging. So as that happens, your character will just auto attack because he's waiting for this to come, the skill to re refresh in a way. We got some more experience. We're almost a level two. So this quest that we got. So we picked up this quest from here. Here's an exclamation point. It said, kill three out of six Rockjaw invaders. So now the map shows us to go down here, but these guys will still count. You look up on our mini map right here it still shows the same area but we can just kill these guys here so let's make quick work of them so the computer told us to left click and hit one now you can hit it with your mouse or you can hit it on your keyboard which is a lot faster let's finish him wow hit level two congratulations now sometimes when you level you get certain abilities but every time you level you get more health I think our health went from 169 to 171. Our mana, which is our resource, went from 29 to 32, which is decent. So, how do these things even play out? Well, Crusader Strike, if you read the tooltip in the bottom right hand corner, says instant strikes the target for 12 physical damage, and that damage will go up every level, generates one holy power. Holy power means nothing to us right now, so all we're going to do is just kill stuff. But there's a second way to target things. If you imagine, this is the character's nose. Whatever's in front of that nose, make a beeline. If you hit the tab key, it's going to tab that. So I'm using D to move, and I'm just going in a circle. As I tab, whatever I'm facing is going to select. You see that? And because I'm in a starter area, this doesn't hurt me at all. I'm just practicing my targeting. So really, you just want to get used to moving around and switching targets by just hitting tab. So whatever my nose is facing at, that's what's going to select. Now you have to be able to see them. So when I was on that ledge and I couldn't see that trog down there, it wouldn't let me select him. And it's just because when you're doing this super fast, they don't want you to select other enemies that you wouldn't want to deal with. Oh, he got destroyed. Let's see if we get the, oh man, okay. So we moved out from this area, and it looks like the dwarves followed us. So we're going to move forward where they tell us to. And let's wrap up this quest. 
So I'm obviously not explaining some things on the screen. It's because they're not really important at this time. You want to limit how much you're you're trying to take in at the beginning. And this especially goes for people who are recruiting new players to play. You don't want to sit and explain a hundred million things to them. You want to explain just a little bit, let them experience things, because that's how veteran players experience things. We jumped into the game and we kind of found something we liked and we continued at it. So on the right hand side, our question mark is complete. The person who gave us a quest has a yellow question mark on the map and a yellow question mark here. That means we've finished the quest. Let's go run and turn this quest in. All right, so Jorin Ironstock, local mountaineer captain. Gives us a little bit of speech, and he says, hey, I'm giving you a reward, some gold and some experience. So all quests, if you can still level up, give experience. Um, they usually give you some type of monetary reward. This is copper. Copper is not very much. And sometimes they give gear or an item. So let's click complete quest. Awesome. And as you see, our experience bar filled up a lot. Quests give a lot more experience than just killing guys, just so you know. And we have another quest, so let's accept it. So, a couple things. The V key turns nameplates off and on. If you ever can't find your nameplates for the enemies, it's because you hit V. Now, this guy gave me a quest. You can take up to 25 quests at once. So you always want to be on the lookout for these things. Oh, so we got a quest item. So they're telling us to open our bag. Everything we loot goes in our bag. So this is our first item we have, right? We got that from that first quest. If you hit the shift key, it tells you what you have equipped. So you don't have to go through all these crazy menus. Just you can get right in the game. So what we're looking for is here... This, uh, these two pieces of armor don't really give us much. But if you look at where it says currently equipped, I'm going to take on the left hand side, really can't take my mouse off because it's going to deselect it. The currently equipped Squire's Pants, it says if you replace this item, the following stat changes will occur. All you really want to look for starting out is do the numbers, are they green, and which one's bigger. So for instance, if I put these Trog Repeller Plate Mail legs on my armor is going to go up by one positives especially when we start out are great so let's just use it so in order to do that we're going to right click now where did it put this gear there's a, a button called c it's your character screen or down in the micro menu it's the first ability it says character info let's just hit c to make it faster wow it's pretty pretty massive screen here. There's a lot going on all these things here they're just pieces of armor you can get when you first start out it doesn't matter if you're missing a lot you're going to get more over time here is the thing that we have equipped thank you for pointing that out so c opens and closes that or you can hit escape escape always exits out of whatever you'll notice a few things so for paladins we have a few attributes that are important uh, strength and stamina so all the gear you're going to want to get is going to have strength if you're the role we're going to choose under Paladin. So every class has game open yet. Every class has at least two roles. Um, those are called specializations or specs for short. Paladins have three. They can be a protection paladin, which is a tank. So if you look at the way World of Warcraft is structured, there's three archetypes if you so the first is a tank and what your job is to do is to take damage when you're questing it's nice being a tank because you can attack a lot of enemies at once you don't die as fast the second role is called retribution under paladins it's the damage spec damage per second or dps spec all that means is you kill stuff fast third for paladins is holy and that's a healer it's hard to quest as a healer because you don't do as much damage. Uh, but we're going to go protection, which we say short for prot, and we're going to pick a tank. But we don't do that yet until level 10, so don't worry about that. If you don't, none of this makes sense, it's okay. So we were talking about this menu down here, and there's a lot of things down here. There's P, which is spell books and abilities. N is talents, which doesn't start till 10. Achievements is Y, it's all the things you've achieved. 
Quest log is L. You can either click down here or hit the L L key, which if you remember, this looks like our map, our M key. It's the same thing. They combined it. Group finder, which is J. You can't do that because we're in a starter edition. Collections, shift P. And these are a number of things you can collect. Don't worry about this right now. You, you'll have nothing there. It's okay. Shop, which was on the character select screen, is right here. And these are our bags. This is what we can hold. Remember, B is for bags. Now, all these have hotkeys. So instead of coming down here to this menu, you can just push those keys. So back to our adventure. We got two quests. The first quest said kill three of these rock jaw goons. And they are in this area. And then we have another quest. Now, in our bag, it told us we had this item here. Sten's first aid kit. Use this near a wounded cold ridge mountaineer to heal them. Five second cooldown. So we talked about cooldown when we were using Crusader Strike. It's how it kind of tick tocked around. Oh, let me go opposite way. So this has a five second cooldown. Now, if you'll notice, though, we don't need to have our, our bag open. We can do two things. We can drag this here. So now, if I hit two, it will use that item. Take it off. I can't drag it off. If you can't drag it off, it means it's locked, and all you have to do is hold shift and pull it off. They just don't want you to, you know, unexpectedly delete things and not know how to find it again. Also, third, we can click up here from the quest log to use the item. I like putting it on my bars because it's just faster. So let's go find a mountaineer to heal. Let's see. Now, it's grayed out, which means this person doesn't need healing. So I think what we're looking for is we're looking for someone who's injured. Now, what's nice about when you start out is, see how these guys aren't really, don't have yellow names, but these off in the distance do? That's because that's our quest item. That's the person we need to come hit. Oh, hey, we found a wounded one. It's like in, <laughs> like in soccer when you're a kid, everybody take a knee. So it tells you to click this. Or we can hit 2 because I put it on my action bar. If only we could heal everybody that fast. You're a lifesaver for Ironforge. This guy's kneeling in the shadows. Let's bring him back. With my powerful band-aid. Let me show what this looks like. You just click it, same thing. Alright, so Rock Jaw Goon. This guy looks a lot bigger. Doesn't necessarily mean he's stronger, but let's find out. Hideous. Oh my gosh, he knocked me back. So he's red now, means he's engaged with me, and even if I run, he's going to chase me. So remember, if they're yellow, they're not going to. It's a Crusader Strike. Man, he hit me pretty far. And ran into my mallet. Now, this is a critter. Critters, you can kill if you want, but you don't have to. They don't give you experience because they're always level one. <clears throat> Alright, so, kind of got the, the sense of things. Let's keep killing. Now, even if I go behind him, he's still going to attack me. So, really moving and dodging things doesn't really matter. Now, if they put something colorful on the ground, you want to avoid that, definitely. But, for the most part, trying to dodge things like that. Now, I can kill that wolf, too, but that's not what my quest is for. Man. There we go. Jumping doesn't really do anything. It just looks kind of neat, especially when you're short dwarf and you're doing this spin, man. So Crusader Strike does a lot more damage. Oh, I'm not facing him. So see how I wasn't attacking? It's because I wasn't facing him. So when you attack him, your nose points at him, you're going back to attack. Let's just finish. Oh. Yeah, that's gross. Alright, so. We finished one quest, but we still have to finish the second one. You really want to finish all the quests in one area because it just helps you level faster. So we finished our quest. It took it away from up here. Now you want to take it off your bars because what's going to happen with quest items like this is it's in my bag. Once I turn in the quest, it's going to take that item back out and you'll never have it again. You won't need it, but it's going to take a place on your bar. 
right click. Let's accept this. Got some experience. Level three. What? Got a new ability. Awesome. So it's going to tell you up here what your new ability is. You can put your mouse over and really read what it does. Judgment. Judges the target dealing 16 holy damage. Now see how this says melee range underneath the word crusader strike? And this says 30 yard range. That means we can do this from afar. So let's kill this truck, shall we? Throws a hammer of righteousness. See how he's almost dead? You want to use your abilities in tandem like that. And if you're low on health, obviously. Now this is press question mark to cast, but you press the button that's associated with it. So we have two abilities. We have a new item. Let's see. We got some boots. Remember to hit shift to see or hit C and we can look boots, squire's boots. We don't want to be a squire anymore. We want to be a boots of the like the names don't really mean much. If you right click it equips it. So we got a little more armor. Now, you know how to open your bags. You know how to check your character screen. You hit shift and highlight over, it shows you what you have selected, and then it shows what's currently equipped. So we've, so far we've got some experience, got a little bit of copper, we got one silver 50 copper, working our way up a little bit here. Got some abilities, put some armor on, and killed some drugs. It's pretty, pretty awesome so far. So, we're going to go over P, and P brings up the spell book, and what that does is, alright, so everything I've shown you so far, is all about your character um so we're gonna keep keep that trend kind of going so these are your abilities and they'll unlock the more we level obviously so starter counts only go to 20 and these are all abilities that every paladin gets now on the right hand side you're going to see protection holy and retribution these don't unlock to level 10 so don't worry about it for right now um that's probably why these are set up for retribution um, you're going to get a little sense of all these to start. But for right now, this gives a little more in-depth information sometimes. Actually, I guess it doesn't. I've never really quite, I guess, looked at it before. Um, but it gives the same amount of information when they're on your bar. So level 5, we're going to get a heal. And so this is where you can preview some things. Now, general, these are abilities that you ha have just as a level 1 character. So auto attack. You can just right click on an enemy and it'll auto attack. Revive battle pets. When you get into pet battles, I, I can show you that as well. So, up here, just kind of because it might catch your eye, these are called buffs. They're things that help your character out, and then the left hand side will be debuffs, things that will hurt your character. So, right now, we have an experience boost. So, all experience has been doubled until Shadowlands drops. It's been really nice, a great way to level characters. And then these are events that are going on. So right now, if you level battle pets, they'll get 200% experience. So that's three times? Yeah. Because um, 100% is double. This should be triple. Um, this guy's weird. Leave me alone. Um, right here is stone form. So this is where we talked about how they can turn to stone. Armor skills. There's four types of armor in the game. Plate, mail, leather, cloth. Paladins use plate. Uh, you get bonuses. So starting at level 50, you receive a 5% increase to your primary stat for wearing plate. What basically it just says is where the type of armor you need will help you out a little bit. Now this is the archaeology racial passive. So passives are things that happen just on their own. Um, instance are abilities that you have to click to use but passives they just happen on their own um, we would take reduced frost damage because hey we live in the snow languages languages really don't matter we went over factions on the character select screen we had alliance in blue on the left there we go and horde in the red on the right all it means is horde and the alliance can't talk to each other so if i say hello a horde character sees it as weird characters and can't respond. Critical strike damage and healing increased by 2%. That's kind of nice. I didn't know they had critical weapon skills. So, 
we have a mallet which is classified as a mace. Paladins can use four types of weapons. Axes, maces, pole arms, and swords. They can also equip shields if you're protection. So, kind of good to know. And then these are just the different riding types. So you can get mounts in the game. Pretty neat. So, enough of that. We've kind of gone through the character select screen enough. So, these guys here are called NPCs. They're non-player characters. What that means is the computer controls them at all times. This guy was a quest giver we had, but they usually are just kind of there to populate the role to make it feel like it's more alive. These guys sell things. So, white and gray armor, you can sell it if you don't need it. These are the things we replaced. So if we right click, we're going to get two copper and one copper. Here's our things that he has to sell. This gives you health back if you want it. And this gives you mana back if you need it. This also is a bag. I don't have four silver, so I can't purchase it quite yet, but I'll show you how to equip that pretty soon here. All right, so let's get back to our adventuring. This is another player, you can tell, because they have a blue title over the name. He's also a paladin because, hey, look, despite the black hair, we are the same person. Now that's an emote. What I just did was is I hit the slash button, and certain words allow you to do certain things. Dance. The whole list of these things, but let's move on. I think he wanted a friend. Oh, one more thing about names. His name's Fulgore, obviously. See, there's an asterisk there. If we put our mouse over it, it says his name Dash Blackrock. So we're on Dagger Spine, Dagger Spire. His is Blackrock. So we're on a different server. So sometimes you might see people from a different server playing near you. But you can't group up and do certain things sometimes because they're on a quest. See this person right here? They're from our server. Oh, Bone Chewer. Never mind. So we have a building. Quest icon goes gray. That lets you know it's inside something. If it has a down arrow, a down carrot below it, it would mean that it's... uh above you sorry down means below up means above my apologies you can also zoom in on your mini map and zoom out you can also click and tell people in your group where to go so wow there's a lot in here okay so monk trainer hunter trainer these are all trainers now it used to be you'd talk to them and you'd get your abilities not anymore they just dump it on your action bar so they're kind of obsolete at this point um, armor and weaponsmith, they sell things. Now, the way items work are, we have some white items equipped. Gray are the worst type of item. White, green, blue, purple, orange. You won't see very many orange or purple. You might see some blue on your lower levels. but So, the reason why I'm telling you this is you don't want to buy white armor. If you need a shield for whatever you're doing, Okay, maybe, but there is no, there's no reason to do that. Um, this button right here will repair your gear. So if you die, or if you continue to get hit, your gear takes damage. See how this is durability 30 over 30? Over time, you'll lose durability, and if things break, you have to come pay to have them fixed. If they break, you just don't get the, the benefits of that piece of gear until it's repaired. You don't lose it or anything. So it's just a bunch of trainers in here, and then Jonah Ironstock with the long hair. Just give us a little bit of experience. So some of these quests are just go talk to this person. Then you get what's called fetch quests or kill quests. So this is a fetch quest. Go get me a cask. Now, I got a new quest. What? This thing's not always going to come up, so you're going to want to keep an eye out for things on your map. I don't like to read the quests. You know, sometimes, like, I'll pick one character and read every single quest. Some are kind of neat. There are some, some really doozy quests, but... All right, so you notice it's changed on the map. Instead of just a blue area, there's these yellow dots. I have to collect some casks of beer. So I need to go find those yellow dots. As you can tell, it's glowing for me. It makes it really easy to see. 
right click. Now some things will go in our bags. Saw how I looted that and it didn't put it in my bag? All that means is it's a quest item and it's just going to collect it for me. It's kind of nice. It doesn't take up bag space that way. Now down here, we got some experience. Reputation with Iron Forge. What? Let's hit you. These are fa these are factions within our so we have our faction. We're the alliance. Okay. But within that alliance there's smaller sub factions. They just call them all factions. So if it gets confusing, just know these are different groups of people. We're Iron Forge because we're dwarves. So as you do quests in this area, you can get some experience with them. Later on you can buy certain things from him, them the more reputation you have. So that's a reputation bar. Okay. Hey look, another cask. Let's go pick it up. See it off in the distance, glowing, calling our name. Awesome. So we need to find one more cask. And we're also looking for forgotten dwarven artifacts. So what you want to do is, as you play, you want to look for both things. You want to utilize your time wisely. The point of an MMORPG is to give you things to do, but they usually take some sort of time. So the more you can expedite things, the more time you'll have for the things you want to do. All right, so we're just exploring. Now we can kill those guys if we wanted, but on fetch quests, I, I want to fetch my stuff and get back. There's the cask out there. So, let me show you one more thing. Key bindings. Okay, these are everything on your keyboard that's associated with something. So I hit escape, key bindings. And if I want to change things in here, I can. Now, toggle auto run. They have it as mouse button four. What button is that? Let's see. It also says num lock. So, hands are off. And I can right click and steer them like a boat. I can push a different direction, it'll stop. Forward and backward will stop that. But that's auto run. Nice is if your hands are tired, you don't have to run with them. All right, so now we need to find these artifacts. But I changed this a little bit though. I like to make my auto run. If you click this, you click a key, it will change it. Now you can always reset the default if you mess something up. I like to set it as the tilde, which is the left of one, because that's just where my hand naturally is, and I can just steer and take my hands off. It's kind of nice. So we're looking for the dwarven artifacts. This is where I should be, okay. Sometimes if you can't find things, it's because they've been looted by other players. So you just sometimes have to be a little patient. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to run back and turn in this quest and then come back out here because you're already out here. You might as well do both things. Now there are a number of sites that will help you figure out the best way to play your class. But honestly, the best way is just to jump in and figure out what works. If you keep dying, why am I dying? Am I fighting too many enemies at once? Am I not using my abilities appropriately? So what you'll want to do is, oh, there's one. Is obviously with the two abilities we have, you're going to want to use the two, which is the judgment, to throw that hammer at something. And then when they get close, knock them out with a crusader strike. So let's show what that looks like. Oh. Tab two. He's coming at me. He just sits on his own. That's the auto attack. Nice. I'm successful. Now I didn't loot that character. Um, I sometimes don't like looting low level stuff. But if you're just starting out, you know, what the heck? It's more gold. And someone did a really good job excavating these things, not much left. So all items like this are kind of on a timer. 
and once one gets taken every so often another one gets put out so it shouldn't take you too long to wrap this quest up but don't be alarmed if you can't find anything let's use our auto run shall we all right just looking back i should have started my whole channel like this actually should have done starting videos all right we've done it we found the dwarven artifacts which if you think about it some of these quests are kind of like you know why what why can't you guys come out of here and pick these up but oh mailbox all right mailboxes don't have access to this feature but you can normally send items to other people if you wanted um or send things between your different characters you have to use the mail unfortunately Oh, nice. They're right next to each other. We have our three required items. Hit continue. Excellent. And we leveled up again. Take the next quest. Turn in this quest. Now, sometimes a quest might not show up because you haven't turned in the other one. So I like to turn them all in and make sure everything's here. And I got two more. All right. Priceless rock jaw artifact. I need to get five of those. So I forgot what I'm supposed to do. Let's see. So I hit, I click this, hit L, M doesn't matter. It all takes you to the same place. So obtain these five priceless rock jaw artifacts from the rock jaw scavengers. Oh hey, he's yellow. Why is that? Oh yeah, I need to kill boars and wolves probably. Let's see. Even though I wasn't far away, you can still use the judgment hammer because. It just does damage. Um, now, boar haunch. I had to click. I had to get that from him. So I had to right click and actually loot him. The bottom right hand corner it says the the enemy type, but also there's a quest associated with it. So it shows you if you mouse over it. It's kind of nice. Right, let's kill this guy too. Just want to see. So we need to find rock jaw scavengers. That's who we're looking for. Now, if I help this person kill him, I get some of that experience. So, you saw I got 64 experience there. Before I was killing him, I got 100. That's what it does when you share experience. So, if someone else is killing something, you want more experience, why not kill him? Alright, so I looted him, got a priceless rock jaw artifact. Oh, I see, he does the same thing. He had a ranged attack. So, had I not gone near him he would have kept attacking me from afar. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Let's see. I can't dodge that. It just follows me. His, his rock though must be on cooldown as well. <laughs> Let's kill you. Boom. Now, even if you get close it's still going to cast it so. Well, I guess when I killed the last one, I got what I needed. That was weird. Okay. Alright, let's just kill these boars. Uh, so boars have this thing where they can charge at you. That's why they're able to run so fast. I'll show you again. There's a class that does an ability like that. The warrior, they can do a charge. Looks just like that. All right, wolf. Now wolves, they'll howl to call other wolves, but. Oh, I almost died. What? All right, so there's no red enemies here. But if I hit B, I did get some jerky I can heal. So if you right click, you're going to sit down and eat. It makes everything look like bread. Unfortunately, you don't have like a rib in your hand. That'd be nice. Or maybe that's a mick rib. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, as you can see, my health is coming back faster. Now you can hit X to sit. You can hit. I'm trying to think. It's a button to lie down. I can't remember what that is. Let's wrap this up.
What? All right. We got our first ability. So, Flash of Light. What does this do? Spends 10 mana. Takes 1.5 seconds to cast it. Expends a large amount of mana to quickly heal a friendly target for 68 health. It's about one third of our health. Alright. Let's bring up something on the menu though. We right click on this, or if we click this little map, little magnifying glass called tracking, it lets us track certain things. I like to go to townsfolk and mailbox just to turn that on. We might want to try. Alright, we need more wolves. Which tells me right here. You can always uncheck that. I'm looking in the blue area to tell me to look. I'm looking for wolves. Now see how this keeps putting this paw over him? That means he's a battle pet. And let me show you what that looks like. So that's what that means is it's like a Pokemon kind of game. I have a lot of pets. <laughs> I got four new ones yesterday. So as you play more, you'll get experience. You'll find different pets. Let me show you one of the ones I got yesterday. So I hit Shift P. This is your collection tab. You can get mounts. There are things you can ride to go a lot faster. Your battle pets. It's pretty awesome. Toys. They do neat things. All sorts of stuff you can collect. And so even if you don't have these things, you can still look through these to see where to get them from. Wildhead's a great resource. Uh, my channel, I try to collect everything in game. This is the heirlooms tab. And what this does is when you start getting a lot more gold, because these are pretty expensive, um, you can buy gear which helps your t characters at level or tunes get more experience and do more damage. So you won't have anything in this tab yet, but it's just a good source to know about. Appearances. This is the transmog tab. These are all pieces of items or pieces of gear you've already unlocked. And so if you're the right level, you can equip these looks on your character. There's a lot here. This is for each, you know, piece that you have. A lot of cool looking stuff in here. Then the sets tab. So these are dungeons and raids. So what happens is you quest after for a certain amount of time. Once you hit level 15, you can get in your first dungeon. Dungeons drop gear. You can equip that gear. The sets are the raid tab. You're a ways off from this. The first raid you can't even get into until 60. And what I would suggest is go there a little higher. But you can still get a sense of what these look like. I mean, why not explore things? doesn't hurt to look at stuff. This is the Judgment set. That set's pretty awful. But there's some really cool things in here. Um, pink Warrior set. <laughs> That's such a neat set. So what you would do is, if I had all this unlocked, and I was level 58, I could uh, equip the look of these items over the items I have. And that to me is fun. If you want to get a sense of some of the newer ones, we scroll up here. As you can see, this there's a lot of a lot of stuff in here. That's a cool one. And over here we can change it to the mythic difficulty, which isn't that nice. So what you can do is you can find like an armor set you like, and then you can figure out how to unlock it. It's kind of the one of the fun things you can do in this a more casual approach to the game obviously that's pretty cool though to be let's say you have to be like 110 to wear this but that's pretty pretty awesome looking i think compared to the schlub you see right here <laughs> all right so let's show a couple of things shall we i'm going to get it an area that has a lot of enemies and I'm going to show you something it's important for you to know I think though so. I want to kill that guy for this quest and go back to where the trogs were oh trolls even better so let's pull a bunch of these shall we so I'm just going to right click so that's how you auto attack I don't want to kill him yet that should be enough 
All right, so I'm surrounded by three guys in red. Oh, come back here, hit you. All right, cool. I'm surrounded. Now I can heal. But healing just doesn't really sustain you that much. So you really have to kill these guys. Once they're red, that means you have their aggro or aggression, and they're going to keep chasing you. Keep attacking, guys. They're going to keep chasing you. Now I can heal, but I mean, as you can tell, they're really killing me. And I'm going to run out of mana at some point. I won't be able to heal through this. So you really want to watch how many things you pull, you know, by how much aggro you spend. You know, it does help killing stuff. If you kill it, it can't hit you. <laughs> So, and you can tab between these targets. You want to go after the one with the least amount of health because he'll die faster and then you can... You're not taking as much damage. But as you can tell, I mean, healing's kind of nice. You don't want to rely on it, though. Because, I mean, you want to pull a little bit smarter. Like, if you keep getting that low on health, you should probably just stop hitting as many things. <laughs> Because if you're healing, you're not killing, which slows things down. So, I mean, it kind of, you know, the best way to do things is just to pull just enough. As a tank, though, you can pull a little bit more. Just, just there's that one caveat. So, ragged young wolves are the ones that we want. That other wolf didn't qualify for the quest. And I checked his name, and I put my mouse over him. See how he doesn't show any items on the bottom right-hand corner? Boom. Put my mouse right here. It shows that I can get hides from these guys. Now, if you can tell, every ability has its own cooldown, but then they all share a cooldown, and it's called called global cooldown. What that means is all the items you have, all the abilities you have, are all on this main timer, and then each ability might have its own timer. So that's one of the things that it kind of keeps you from attacking fast. There's no way to change that uh, Blizzard. That Blizzard's company made World of Warcraft. They just instituted that this last expansion. It's been most of us don't like it, but because you're you're kind of stuck waiting, but it's okay. So literally, all we're going to do is just keep killing stuff until we reach a certain level. Once we reach that level, you know, let's turn these things in. I kind of gave you the gist of almost everything. There are a lot more menus, a lot more other things. Uh, so I got some more bag. Oh, rock jaw breastplate. Let's get rid of it. Uh, yes, plus one armor. And as you can tell, the stuff I'm wearing is changing slightly. Wow, Gray Mountain. That, that's a really good name. <laughs> Especially because he towered over me. That's pretty sweet. So they changed some things in World of Warcraft where you can go back to old zones as long as you're in the level range and still level here. So this used to be the level 1 through 5 zone, but now it's 1 through 60. So you can literally come back here and do all the starting quests because the enemies will scale up to you. We're just going to race to level 20. So I'm just right clicking and just accepting every quest I can. You should definitely take some time to read these, especially if it's your first time through, like really experience the game. I'm just trying to show people how to quickly get in the game and get started and figure some things out. So don't be discouraged if you know you're not killing stuff as fast as other people at your level. Uh, they might have heirloom gear, which does heirloom gear puts. I'd kill these guys a lot faster if I had heirloom gear. Let's actually show what that looks like, just to show you. Okay, so just to show you the difference, I'll take it off, but. There we go. Let's equip all this. Alright, so watch how much faster stuff dies. Dead. 
And I got 30 more experience for it too. <laughs> but that's cheating. So if you left click and left click, you can destroy stuff or move it out of your bags if you need to. Actually, though, I think I want to. Now that I think about it. I level faster, I can get to 10 and show you guys a little more. All right, so heads there. Shoulders I have. Back I have. I need a chest. Legs. So this will give me level 60 faster. Or sorry, level 10. Because I want to show everybody specs. See, I, I hit the guy one shot and killed him. <laughs> it's such a difference. Um, something else is over here. Oh, I heard her story. Okay. Well, I just scout that area. There we go. Scouting just means going over to it. See, I look a lot more menacing, I gotta say. That little carnival mallet just wasn't doing it for me. Hit M. Make sure I'm going the right way. I am. Checked up on my mini map just to make sure I was going the right way. Using my tab targeting to switch between the most deadly target or whatever's in front of me. All right, let's just kill one more of these guys. And they're yellow. Now, back when Rules of Warcraft first came out, all these guys would have been red. <laughs> Uh, they've made the game a lot easier. All right, awesome. Do I have to scout this area? I do. So I think you have to scout them by running to the soothsayers. So right now, these trolls want to take over the valley from the dwarves, which is weird. It made more sense when these guys were red and tried to attack you because if they're trying to take your land, homeland from you, they wouldn't just let you come up and reveal their you know plans to you. They would attack you. <laughs> But they wanted to make the leveling process a little bit easier, not kill everybody right away, because that's ultimately why we had to learn more when we first started, is because things were so hard to be successful, you had to find all these things. Our land be a land of ice and snow, but beneath the earth, child, there always be fire. Alright, so I think I got all three, nice. Now, with the heirloom gear, quests will give you more experience too. So that will let me get to level 10 faster. That way I can show you guys what specs are, or specializations, and how we utilize them. So this would give you enough to get you through. Um, of course, you're, you want to learn a few more things, and I'll touch on those in another video. But for this, this just gets you started. If a friend wants to play World of Warcraft with you, this is the basics, all you really need to know. Now, because I have heirloom gear, I my stuff is always better than this. So I'd pick whatever sells for the most. But if we look back at our trusty mallet, it was a mace. Um, oh, yeah. So if you control and left click, you can preview what these items are going to look like on your character. I think that looks this looks a little better. Let's go with that. Close. So 1500 experience. Let me show you what that looks like with all this off. Alright, so it gives you more experience. It says, hey, your bag is almost full. Don't let your bag be full. Level 7. So let's sell these things, shall we? So these have coins on them. That means I don't need them. Uh, this is a, the chest I replaced, and that's the camera I replaced. Okay. I don't need those items. I need bag space right now. You can buy more bags, obviously. That's kind of expensive, but let's buy one. Buy two. All right, so it's filled up this bar. If I hit B, I have more space to store more crap. Let's put 
pretty much what it boils down to. So we have one quest, but this quest has four components. So I'm following the arrow. Now I know the arrow points here, but a lot of times stuff is hidden in caves. And so you want to kind of keep that in mind. If you can't find something exactly, now there are a lot of add-ons, which add-ons give you more information or, or they're parts of the game that make it easier to play. So there's some that tell you where to go, all sorts of those things, but we were not going to get into that in this video. Just no time to go over everything we want to go over. I'm going to stop looting and try to speed this up a little bit. We're going to race this part ahead until I hit uh, 10. Another ability, level eight, yay. All right, so, Hammer of Justice stuns the target. Okay, so, one minute cooldown. You're going to want to save this for when you really need it. So let's go back to the example when I had four enemies. Let's say I had six enemies on me and another one came up. I'd want to stun one of those to avoid taking more damage. It's not an ability you use a lot. So you want to put it on this side of your bar. So we're going to sprint ahead. Had I had the heirlooms on the whole time, I would have already been 10. So that's something else to keep in mind is you want to pick a character that can get you leveled up pretty fast and then have more gold, or have a friend loan you, loan you some gold. Um, you can make more gold later on. We haven't made a gold yet, so it converts this way. 100 copper becomes 1 silver, 100 silver becomes 1 gold, and gold goes all the way up to 9,999,999. Here's the thing. They're talking about the cataclysm getting the trolls all all riled up. So throughout the course of World of Warcraft they added new content and sometimes didn't go back and fix content. In the Cataclysm expansion, they went back and redid all the old zones. And they added more expansions after that. So what's going to happen is a lot of the older stuff will refer to the cataclysm. And then a lot of the old, newer stuff won't even mention it. Um, it. It might be a little off-putting. Off Don't worry. Just keep leveling. You'll, you'll kind of learn things as you go. The newest expansion always is the best place to look. Now, oh my gosh, there's just a plethora of quests. So we have shops and places to explore. All right. So another quest. We know how to pick up quests. We talk to a guy. Pick up the quests. There's a mailbox, we already talked about that. There's more quests, more quests, more quests, more quests. All right, what is that? Green exclamation point. Okay, so these are called flight paths. What these do is they allow you to fly to other areas. Now, we have mounts in the game, we can run with those. But there's another kind of mount that lets you fly. You don't get flying to level 60. These are ways to fly faster. So if I right click, I learn it. There's no green exclamation point anymore. It means I know it. If we hit M on our map, we can jump to different zones. This is one of the maps. So let me show that again. We're in this little area called Dunmoreau. It's in the Eastern Kingdoms. It's on Azeroth. These are all the areas in the Eastern Kingdoms. There's a lot. 
Azeroth is broken into a few areas. Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, those are for level 60. Uh, sorry, 1 through 60. The Outlands, which are here, this is level 60 to 70. It's a whole other area. Level 70 is Northrend. Okay, after Northrend is Cataclysm. And Cataclysm zones were added to Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, the Maelstrom. Cataclysm's a little weird. Um, after that is Pandaria. Mr. Pandaria. Then Warlords of Draenor. We went back to a, a different planet, if you will. This is Warlords of Draenor. After that, the Legion came and brought the Broken Isles with them. Group of areas. After that is Battle for Azeroth, which brought these two areas in. So at first it was just these two. And suddenly we found all these unexplored places in between. It's kind of odd. But we can use this to fly to our big place, which is Iron Forge. So if you see off in the distance, let's see. Let's see from here. Yes, up here, these towers. The castle of Iron Forge is embedded into the mountain. That's where our main zone is for this area. Now we have one more quest. Now it's gray, so we know that means it's inside somewhere. So, wow. Now that's interesting. My level went away, and now it says Z. What that means is I'm resting. When you rest, you get more experience. Right now we're purple, that's just normal. But when this becomes blue, it means we get double experience. So when you log out of a character, you start to earn up rested experience, which definitely helps when you kill enemies. All right, so, oh hey, there's already a quest to turn in. What? We're gonna hit 10 in no time. There we go. So, every starting zone has a quest like this where you talk to this person and you go to the main city. Um, for humans, it's in Stormwind. For orcs, it's in Orgrimmar. And really, they just want to introduce you to the capital city. So, hold on. So, when you're on a flight path, you can't control it. There is a way to request a stop, but it has a preset pattern that's going to follow. Um, in the main castles like this, this place is massive, look, it's huge. In the main areas, you are always rested, so don't worry about that. I think we go up here, let's see. There we go. Now that's an achievement. I think it's the first one we got. Achievements go right here. Now, the more you play this game, the more achievements you're going to unlock. And a lot of the achievements go from one character to the other. So if I unlocked 50, 50 quests, it will show the date for this one. But the first actual unlocking came in January on a different character so kind of keep that in mind the more you play more things you'll unlock it's kind of nature of the beast right so we're now going to go back oh okay so i picked up the items i'm going to take them to this guy and take them back i think is how it works so anytime you click something it does put the target right here there's ways to make these things look different those are called add-ons Again, like I kind of mentioned, that's a sweet sword. So many gnomes. All right, this will get us level 10. So, Iron Forge, gnome, dwarves and gnomes. This is what I, when we talked about reputation with your faction, remember this screen? Well, these are things you can buy. You can buy the tabard, you can buy bigger. Bag 16 spots. The high, the a good bag right now to buy, especially if you have gold or friends, is the 30 slot bag. So you can buy four bags at 30 slots. That definitely helps a lot. Um, 
Oh, let's get rid of these. Make room. What was that? So this is something I got from a quest. Is right click to open. Oh, cool! It gives you another bag. Awesome. There's a couple other things to have. Sell them. I'll we'll make room. This button right here cleans them up. It just kind of sorts it based on what it has set up for you. So it's an easier way to see things. All right, let's fly back. Let's turn in that quest, shall we? We're going to hit level 10. You won't hit level 10 this fast if you don't have heirloom. All right, so let's run back, turn this quest in, and then we'll get... Oh, one more thing. Um, let's read out here. Okay, professions. If you hit K, it's your profession tab. Cooking, fishing, archaeology, everybody can get those. You, There's a number of professions. There's some that gather things. There's some that make things. What I would suggest is first starting out, go to a profession trainer. They're in every starting area, the second area. Um, you'll find someone like this. You want to pick these two professions no matter what to start. Sorry. Go back to gathering and production. We're gathering herbalism. Say train me. Click the first skill, say train. Hit accept, escape, do the same thing again, gathering, mining, mining. The red ones you can't do yet, so click filter, say unavailable. That way it hides all that. So what did we just do? We picked up two skills. Um, hit right click on him, right click on the mining pick. Okay, you need that. All right, so what we did was, you're going to see, go over here, tracking, find herbs and find minerals are clicked. You're going to see these little uh, yellow circles in the ground. Those are mine, those are ores, which you can mine, and they're herbs, flowers you can pick. The reason why you want to do this is as you're leveling, it gives you a lot of experience. So you kill enemies, turn in quests, and then you pick flowers and mine ore. You can sell those in what's called an auction house. You don't want to vendor those. So remember when we came to one of the shop guys and sold back the armor I'm not using anymore? That's called vendoring something. We don't want to vendor the um, the 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 ore and the flowers. The reason being is those can sell in what's called the auction house. Now, auction house selling is a whole different beast. Um, they made the process a lot easier, and I can show that in the second video. Let me write this down actually. All right, I'll make a second follow-up video, but this is just a starting video, so I don't really want to go into that too much, but you want to pick up those two professions just because it will help you level faster. Um, on my server, uh, Storm Rage, the one I play on, the so this is the 1 through 60 area. A lot of those herbs and ore do sell for pretty decent gold, uh, sometimes 2 to 4 gold each piece. So if you go just make one circle and you get 20 or 30, that's like 40 to 60 gold. As a starting character, that's pretty sweet. All right, so here we go. You ready? Grimlock. Level 10. What? We got another ability. Okay, so a lot of things just happened. We opened up Battlegrounds, which is PvP. We opened up specializations, and we got a lot of reputation. So, you can also train bandages here. I actually used to be able to, not anymore. Kind of got rid of first aid. So, you can make, so as your professions go, you can make gear, you can make potions, things like that. But, the thing we're interested in right now is, we're level 10. So here's what that means. First, level 10 there. We can hit N now. And what? What is this screen? Okay, so. Retribution is the damage dealing class, okay? We still use Crusader Strike. 
And at level 10, we have this ability called Templar's Verdict. So it just does more damage. This thing is called Holy Power. This little bar drop down. As you kill stuff, that Holy Power fills up. It takes three of those to use this. Kind of how it works. Protection. That's the tank spec. We're going to go to that right now. And holy is the healer spec. Let's go protection. We're going to say activate. Now you can change this in a rested area. Sometimes you can change this when you quest. You can't change this in a dungeon. So once you're in a dungeon, you're stuck. All right. So you see how some of we have some new abilities and things like that. What did I get? I kind of forgot. All right. Hit escape. What, what button do I push? Let's press P and we're back at it again. Now, I'm going to cheat here. Do I have a shield? I do. Awesome. If you don't have a shield, you would have to buy one here. But for tank, actually, I need a one-handed weapon and a shield. All right. What? And it glows purple. I'm ready. I'm in business. Let's go. All right. So, what the heck did I just get? Go back to P. Avenger Shield. Hur hurls your shield at an enemy target, dealing 34 damage, and then jumping to two additional enemies. Increase the effects of your next Shield of Righteous. Okay. So, a couple things that came up. It says in blue you haven't added this to your action bar. Okay. Flash of Light. We know what that is. That was our heal before. That was at three. Hammer of Justice, that's that stun that's here. Hammer of the Righteous is new. Judgment is not new. So let's put Judgment back on here. Hammer of the Righteous. Hammer is a current target for 17 damage. Now, I've been playing a Paladin for a while. And the other thing that this will do is it will reduce the amount of damage you take too. But let's just let's go see this in action. This will wrap up our first video. Appreciate everybody for staying through it this long. Hope you at least learned something. Feel free to leave comments below. Let me know what you need help with. Um, it's an amazing game. I do enjoy playing World of Warcraft. Uh, but it's important for people to experience things. And so if, make sure that you have the opportunity to experience some things and ask questions. That's the best thing you can do. All right, so there's two yet. Uh, I want to find a group of at least two. It's just one. Let me show you what this looks like, though. Ready? Oh, he's gonna. That's a mage right there. It's different classes. Uh... Shield. Boom. Judgment. Ha 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 ha. Now, kind of a long cooldown. So, what this looks like. Hit him with the shield. Oh, glowing thing on the map. There it is. First herb. Now those guys are giving me about 161 experience per kill. Right click, 392. So yeah, it's not like amazing, but that's just, that's like two more kills you just got. More experience helps you level faster. Let's see what this looks like. Alright, I need to see what this shield looks like. Or the sh the hammer of the righteous. Oh, I thought it was shield of righteous. It changes. So you can, as you can see, stuff dies faster. So let's go back to N. Let's go back to retribution. Now let me show you what the what the damage class looks like. So the gear stays the same. Just when you when you switch specs, sometimes you have to switch your gear out. All right, so. Let's go back to P. We have Crusader Strike, this, and Templar's Verdict. That's it. It's the only real change. So Crusader Strike and the and the hammer. We know what the hammer does. We know what Crusader Strike does. Templar's Verdict. So every time you use one of these, it generates a holy power. Okay. So we need to have three to use this one. I remember that. So three. You can store up to five holy power. 
Let's see what it looks like when I just hit one. Ready? Wow, that hits him pretty hard. That was a good amount of damage. For me, I like tanking. That's just more enjoyable for me. You take it, you don't die as fast. And I just, as a paladin, I've always liked the shield. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's fun to sh throw your shield at stuff like Captain America. It's fun. What's cool is when you get like a group of enemies, the shield later on can hit up to four targets, so it just like bounces between them. Now see? More gold dots. Appreciate everybody hanging with us this, this long. Uh, I hope this was beneficial. I hope you understand some things. Uh, I hope you got a sense of a little bit of what World of Warcraft is like. This is what the starter edition gives you. Let's experience with the game and see if it's something for you. The game gets a lot more fun. The longer you play, the more access you have to new abilities. Um, as always, take care, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Leave some comments below and let me know what I could have done better. Thanks and take care.